Hello guys, welcome to onlyvmware.com. Today we are going to start the VMware lab implementation setup on VMware Workstation. So we have a series of videos where we will go step by step. First of all, we'll understand the basic requirements of the lab. Then we will understand VM creations, cluster setup, required database, storage. So with that, let's get started. So first of all, we should know that what is the basic server requirement or the server configuration to set up the lab. As we are doing it on a VMware workstation software, we can set up the lab on a single system. If you have a good configuration desktop machine, then we can definitely set up the lab on it. So I have created a notepad for, for you guys where you can understand the basic requirements and all. So the minimum recommended requirement is the quad core CPU, 16 GB RAM, 250 GB SSD, 500 GB or 1 TB of SATA hard drive. The virtualization for the CPU processor should be enabled in a BIOS settings. For the Intel servers, the virtualization will be VTX, Intel VTX and for the AMD, it's AMD V. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you that what system I'm using for the lab setup. So let me show you the configuration. Okay, here you can see that I'm using the Intel quad core, dual quad core actually. It's i7. I'm getting total 8 threads and 4 core CPUs, physical CPUs. The motherboard I have is the ASUS P8B75-V. The reason I have decided to take this motherboard because it's not that costly and it has the inbuilt graphics also and you can connect the graphics card also. I have connected a graphics card but that's not mandatory. Okay, so the system is a gaming machine. Okay, I'm using a gaming machine for the lab. So definitely you can do that. The memory is 32 GB. Okay, 16 GB is good enough for us. The reason we uh, have specified that 250 GB of SSD is SSD definitely boots uh, faster than the normal SATA drive as we create virtual machine inside the workstation. So every time we shut down the VMs and again we start the physical server, the all VMs get boots. If we place all those VM in a suspense state and then we shut down the physical server, all this task takes a lot of uh, time. So if we have the SSD drive, then uh, definitely the server will boot fast. So that's the only reason. Otherwise, it is not at all mandatory. It is just a recommendation. Okay. So just confirm if the virtualization is enabled. Okay. Other than this, we sh will know that what are the VMs we will require to create for the cluster setup will require DNS server, Active Directory, ESXi, installations, database server, vCenter, storage. We can keep DNS and AD in one server because uh, I have 32 GB memory but in case if you have 16 GB then better to create, uh, I mean, reduce number of VMs for the cluster setup. So I'll recommend to just create single VM for the DNS and AD. ESXi, two ESXi servers are good enough to perform all the labs. The database server will use SQL. Okay, uh, we can use the Im embedded database if we'll use the VMware appliance, vCenter appliance. So, but I'll prefer to just show you the separate database server and creating a complete VMware lab, including DNS, Active Directory, storage, everything. Because the uh, what I I am thinking is just to, to show you the production lab environment or production setup where they use a separate database server, they use separate AD server, DNS server. So that's why I'll uh, just create separate VMs for all those. Okay. And the storage, we will use the software as easy. We can use any third party application for that. Now the installers and say the ISOs will require prior starting the lab implementation, we should have the Windows 2008 R2 64 bit ISO with us. You can use 2012 if you have SQL Server 2008 will require the express edition will do okay ESXi installers will require you can download ESXi vCenter from VMware site itself just create your own login on a VMware website go to the products and download all these trial 60 days trial products okay and if uh, you wish you can just reinstall the products 
and again just take the benefit of the 16 days, 60 days free trial okay the storage application we have starwind iskz or the open filer uh, i'll use starwind it is very easy to configure we will also require the sql server netting client so for the vcenter database connections uh, connection string we require the native client this is the 64 bit native client okay the, for the update manager we require a 32 bit native client other than this just to let you know that we have a series like uh, say seven videos uh, this is the first video where we will see the basic requirements and the mw workstation installation and the basic configurations in the next video we will create a base template then we will create dns and ad virtual machines configure active directory dns then we will create esxi vms add all those vms inside the dns we will create the database server we will create the vcenter we will also create a vcenter appliance just to show you okay uh, we will set up the shared storage so let's proceed with the workstation installation so I'm just minimizing it and as I told you that we should have all those installers in one place now I have a VMware installer folder here I have downloaded all those installers now I'll use workstation just run as administrator okay this is a normal windows installation so not a big deal go to typical next yeah 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 continue that's it i'll just pause the video for say two minutes i think the installation will take okay guys the installation is completed now it is asking for the license key I'll uh, skip this step uh, because by default you get 30 days of trial license so those who are not VCP they can uh, utilize this 30 days trial license people who are VCP certified they get VMware workstation license free of cost okay so they receive a key through email they get a VMware uh, workstation license okay now let's start with the workstation configurations so first of all we need to go to the preferences and uh, do some uh, tricks the first one is the workspace that is we need to define a place where to keep the virtual machine files so here in the e drive where i have enough disk space available i have created a folder that vm data and inside that folder now the vm files will be located other than this we need to check the memory so now I have 32 GB memory out of that 24 GB I am allocating to VMware workstation for the virtual machines so the VM uh, will ut utilize this memory okay and the remaining 8 GB I will use for my desktop machine so that's it now other than this we need to check the network so by default workstation gives us the bridged host only and NAT bridged we require when you wish to uh, you know use the internet inside the virtual machine so we require the bridge network the host only the host only when we wish to create a private uh, network or the communication between the virtual machine and the virtual machines that's what we are going to do now so for that we require the host only and other than this the NAT okay sharing the host IP addresses with the virtual machines so we are going to create a new network so first one is the vmnet2 vmnet2 host only is the new network available so i'll just remove this i don't want it to be connected to the virtual machines right away so i'll allocate a new ip range we we need to design the ip range so i'm using 172.16.0.0 and then define the IP address range 0 say dot 1 ok so first 100 IPs will be utilized so that's it now in this video we have learned the workstation installation basic system configurations the required virtual machines and the applications ok Thanks guys, let's meet in the second video, that's it.